This video is made with those people in mind who want to plough vintage mountain style. I am pleased to be associated on this occasion with Clive Underhill, a champion ploughman. We're using his kit, an international tractor with a mounted international two for a plough. And we emphasise that this plough is completely standard. There is no sophistication whatsoever. It's as manufactured. It's in average condition and in two for a form. It started life, I believe, as a three for a plough, but Clive, in his wisdom, has broken it down to two, since it must be obvious to everyone that it is easier to plough with a two for a plough than with a three. One of the main reasons being, of course, it is so much easier to match two furrows rather than three. And it is certainly easier to calculate the exact width for finishing with two as opposed to three. When a young chap wants to go plowing, he goes out, he counts his pennies, and he finds he's got enough, he thinks he's got enough to buy a plow, he goes to a farm himself, what should he look what's, what, are, what are the critical things in buying a second hand plow? Basically, you want to go for a plow that's not got rusty moldboards to start with, because if you do, unless you're on very abrasive soil, you get an awful lot of trouble with it, especially on sticky soil. I don't well believe that. By yeah. rusty you mean pitted? Yeah. I pitted. mean a bit of surface rust is not going to hurt, is it? No. That'll come off with any cloth, yeah. do you see? Yeah. But anything that's pitted it won't yeah. scour, will it? Yeah, that's right. I sympathise with that. And the other thing is, uh, whether they're worn in the fixing holes on yeah, the Yeah, on, on the throats. That's where the most pressure comes. But strangely enough, not, not the most wear, is it? I've, my experience, sh sh the tails wear quicker than the throat. Yeah. And that's not critical, is it? If they wear off the back, you can replate them. That's right, yeah. But of course, as you rightly say, if they wear on the throat, right. that stud pulls through. Yeah. There's nothing you can, do, nothing you can do about it. No. And discs, I suppose, are, all these things are pretty slack in their bearings anyway. Well, I mean, this plough has got slack in its bearings. Yes. That way, you, you want to make sure that the actual hub bearings yes. are okay, yes. but that you can counteract by um, setting the disc up. Yes, Is it take, take, take the slack take up the by slack hand. Out when you set it. Because yeah. that's where it's going to be when you're working anyway. That's it? right, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's those two points, and also that you haven't got a, a bent frame. I see. Which is but, but I always thought, if you've got a bent frame, you can pack it out, can't you? You could, you could you, you, if it's bent that way, you can wash it out, can't you? And you can get yeah. away with that, shim it out. Yeah, you can do it that way, but if it's bent the other way, I then see. they very oh, often yeah. go through those two bolt holes. So bend this, down, or This up. would bend yeah. down like that. Yes. If that does bend down, you've got the... It affects you, the pitch. You've got too much pitch, it affects the pitch. I see. Yeah. Yes, I understand that. So that's one thing you want to watch for. Yes. I mean, it's not the end of the world. You could take the plate piece and put on a press. And yes, but it's all it taking effort and, uh, and uh, right. probably money as well. Yeah. I see. That's good. And yes. then just make sure that threads on your winding handles are okay. Yes. Nothing worse than ploughing away and then the thread slips yeah, in there. Yeah, that's got a bit injured in there. And then you don't yeah. do any more. Exactly. Likewise on the furrow width adjuster. That's right. I see. That's it. Well, so there's not, there's not, I mean, the only bearing right, there's a wheel bearing, obviously, in yeah. this case, and two disc <coughs> bearings, all there is, isn't it? Right. Right? Yeah. Well, it's interesting but to that's, the, that's the basic thing yeah. to look for anyway. And the landslide, that's, uh, they'll be alright of course. And the other thing to look for is whether the shear is tight on the frog. On the toe, yes. On the toe. Yes. If, if they're too badly worn, there's not a lot you can do about it, except if you get the welder on there and weld it. But you might not be able to weld it back no. where it's supposed to be. No, that's right. You'll probably take the temper out of the metal or yeah. it's unlawful. Exactly. I mean, what I have well, done... But ha have you come across frogs that are worn or toes that are worn like that then? Not very often, no. no. I mean, this one has got a slight bit of wear in it, but the way I overcome it, you just get a small piece of rag, yeah. put it over the toe, and yeah. then drive the shear back yeah, on right. it. A bit of and car, and like and that's yeah. all they can do. I see, it? I see. That's interesting. Um, well, that's all right, guys. That, that gives some idea of what to look for in buying a plough. Yeah. Now, what should these young chaps, how are they going to work? So they hope that they walk this plough, they get it home, they put it on a concrete floor, they think, well, let's get it something like right before we go into the field. What's, what's the first move? What's the first thing? Well, you want to set, decide what width you're going to plough with the plough, yes. and then roughly set up that width. And the way I usually do it is to get the straight out along the landslide, cutting at the heel of the slide, yeah, and on the point of the shear, just a bit touching the point of the shear, yeah, and whatever whatever width you want to plough should measure the width that you want to plough from the straight edge to the point of that front shear. Yes, do you follow? Yes, I do. So that's how you determine the width. You, you, when yeah. you set that, 
Yeah. Well, that's fine. I can see that. Yeah. W what about the back one? Since you've got the extended beam, you, you, you've got the. How, how are you going to get the back one uh, uh, in the right width? Yeah, but that, see, that's the width that the back one's going to plow, is that? Well, of course it is. From, from the toe of that one, of course that it is. Of course it is. This, this, this is a rear slice. This is a yeah. rear slice, of course. It is. I mean, you adjust the front one, either yeah. yeah. the cross shaft yeah. or your leveling hand. Well, that's straightforward. So, it's critical, and I'm sure you'll agree, in setting up a, a max plow as to how far the more boards throw, that's to say, how, how, um, at what angle they are in relation to the beam. And of course, yeah. they must be both the same, in other words, you get paired work. Yeah. I just wonder how you how you do it on this plow. I'm more conversant with curled plows. They've got an extended beam that comes back, so I can measure from the tail of the bore up to the beam. In this case, from the tail of the rear bore, you haven't got a beam to measure. No. So I'm a bit confused <laughs> how you do yeah. that. Well, what I do, I establish the width of the actual toilet throw, yes. because that's what's going to run in the furrow. Right. You, you don't want the mole board to be too narrow, because the yeah. toilet is going to squash the furrow. That's right. And you get any wheel that pops up. Yeah. So you establish the width of the tyre, yes. and then you measure from the back of the mould board straight across to where in the, uh, the side of the, well, the, wall would the furrow wall would be. Yes. And I do that by laying a stick along the land side, the same as I did oh, with I the measuring the width. Yeah, lovely. I see that. I see that. So, and then yep. you take that measurement, yes. say that's 22, yes. you then go and measure the front one to that. Stick or land side. Yes. Whatever width you're ploughing, that say you're ploughing ten inches. Yes. That would make the, the measurement on the front one twelve inches plus ten. Twenty-two. Which is twenty-two. Ah, oh, sorry. Even my mathematics keep up with that. <laughs> Even my mathematics keep up with that. That's lovely. I understand well, that. Well, that gives you a start. You can yes. sort of finalise that adjustment exactly. when you're actually in the field. So, so you've got a twelve inch furrow, so. But you don't want that car just sitting snug in there. You want a little bit of tolerance, don't you? Yeah. You, 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 would, have, you would have an inch or just a well, couple of inches. I usually just go just a little bit more because with these small moulds, yeah. you can't push it too far that's anyway. It. As long as the car yeah. misses the car, that's, right. that's okay. Because the least so you have on the board, the least disturbance to the soil there is, it keeps the soil more intact. That's right, yeah. yeah I, I can understand that. Yeah. I understand that exactly. That's where you do the adjustment, though. You have to flatten that one off. Oh, I see. Yeah. Of course. So to push it wider, you just lengthen that, yeah. push it out, or yeah. bring it in, just shorten it okay. down. Once you've got that set, make sure that this is right in the middle of this slide. You know where it wants to settle down, and then point the back. Yeah, it I see. That's right. I, I, uh, yeah. So. so you have to understand, so you get this right, take yeah. all that back, and then this right, yeah. wherever that piece is up, if you do it up nice and tight, that's, that's where it wants to be. That's, that's right, yeah. There's, there's no strain on that at all. No. I understand, that makes sense. Because that slotted, yes. you find the middle of the slot yes. when you adjusted that, yes. and then just tighten it back up again. Is there any advantage by them having tail things on this plow? I see that the reasons made for walk things aren't there. Yeah. If, I mean, if you were constantly ploughing, or you were hopefully ploughing six inches with it, because you've got such a shallow mould board, yeah. they could be an advantage for you to just help. Okay. You can have them up a little bit too, rather than you lining probably a rough a little bit. Yeah. In other words, what you be doing with you extending your depth of mould board? That's well, what you do. Yeah. 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 Well, and slightly with the length. Oh, I'm length. Push it into yeah. place. Okay. Yeah. But this plow is still used mostly on the top soils, yeah. so you don't usually find the need for them. You know, you know. It's but deeper soils you might do. Yeah. So if you were saying just now that uh, be careful to watch these beams on south, but then down, yeah. uh, because it will affect the pitch. Yeah. Of course you can see that. What is the pitch incidentally on these plows? Usually on these small plows and most plows, yes. the older ones, it's about 25 inches from uh, I see. The underside of the shear to the top of the beam. To the top of the beam. Yeah. I see. So yeah. And the both both pitches are the same. And you want in, in, in mounted work, but you have both the same. Just yeah. like they're different in the tail plow. Yeah. I see. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. that would determine, wouldn't it, whether the plow was what I call sagging or not on yeah. the beam. Yeah. That's good. Because yeah. if you get a plow with a front pitch lower than the back one, yeah. <coughs> the, the tendency then you'd have to wind that side up. Yeah put the plough level, then the plough doesn't run level, it's running over on yes. this point. Yes. So you really yes. must get them level. Yes. They're both the same. With a mounted plough? With a mounted plough, yeah. <laughs> we emphasize that. With a tail plough, we, yeah. we, we put an extra pick up, we put yeah. the increased pick on the front. But that's, yeah. that's another story. That's yeah. another story. Right. And, and where, where, where do you have the discs? Um, uh, you, you want the centre of the disc over the point of the chair, more or less? Yeah, normally you would. Yeah. But 
with this player they I got them back slightly because I can't get the front disc any further forward than what it is. I see. So this particular player is running with the with the centre of the heart. Yes. Just back behind yes. the point of the just trailing field. just trailing yeah. behind the point. I see. Which isn't a bad fault no. anyway, because no. it helps the player to penetrate the ground. And you and you will find from normal work, from normal just sand cutting you have a disc virtually. You wouldn't undercut or overcut you'd have them up there. This yeah, normally this player we've got them slightly undercutting. I see. If you do get a lot of straw, it helps yes. put the straw in. Yes, yes. <coughs> but you can't go too far because if you get them over too far, yes. it stops the clouds from going in the rain yes. and yes. and, uh, yes. I see you've got skins on this. This uh, magic skin, well and bean magic skin. These are the things that the standard at the magic yes. skin with the flavor like a yeah. Could you give us some indications to where you put them, just, just to set out? I know that when you get in the field of these fine adjustments, but just to, to start off with placing on a concrete floor, some indications where you Well, basically, if I'm ploughing, say, five and a half inches deep, I'd set them up at four and a half, so I'm skimming off about an inch. And the way I would do it, lift the disc right up like that, so you take all the slack out of it, and then measure at the shortest point between the shear and the point of the skin. So you know that you're going to skim four and a half inches. So if you're ploughing five and a half inches, you're going to skim off an inch. That makes sense. I understand. Now see, with well, this skin, have you got any adjustment four and a half? Can you, can you, can you, have, can you have a skin further forward? No, nope, you can't. That's the that like that. yes, yeah. one. Yeah. Well, I, I, it seems to me that that skin might work better if it's further forward, but uh, maybe that's the way it goes. Yeah. Put my ball on. Yeah. Uh, I see you've got a weight on there, Clive. That's not standard. No. Is that, is that <laughs> necessary? Uh, usually not. If you get if it's going a bit firm or hard, if you put a weight on this side of the plow, yeah. it helps keep the plow over so, it's, so that it doesn't jump up on the front. Yeah. If you hit a stone or anything, the first thing it does, it jumps up at the front. Yeah. If you put a weight on there, it helps keep the front of the plow down and it helps it stay in the ground better. So your contention is if you keep the front in, the back one's got to be in. Usually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, if it gets very bad, I mean, you've got a provision to put another one on there okay. if you have to. Yeah. But, uh, don't like to is, 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 that, is that a standard bit, or do you no, rather? I'd rather that on, yeah. yeah. So there's no real provision to put But they weren't designed to carry those No. I see, I not But only being a, a little too far up there, there's not much weight in it. Not much so no. Sometimes you've got to put extra weight yeah. on. And I can see. So to keep it there. Looking at those legs on the plough, the front one especially looks as though it could be twisted but in actual fact they're made like that. It's a characteristic of the plough to get your different furrow widths from 9 inches to say 11 inches if it is a 3 furrow plough because that is a 3 furrow plough with the back plough taken off. So that's the way they get their different furrow widths. So here we are with the plough ready to go to the field, a basic two-furrow international mounted plough. Now we propose to use for this video the pegging out sequence from the ploughing to wind video, a video that we made a couple of years ago concerned primarily with trailed vintage ploughing. I make the point here that this pegging out sequence, whether you're using mounted, trailed, high cut, reversible, world star or whatever, the, the uh, pegging out sequence is much the same. At a ploughing match all plots will have been previously marked out and uh, the pegs will be inserted by the committee, plots will be drawn and allocated the course, so it's a competitor's job is to find the secretary's tent and get their respective numbers from the secretary, find their plot, then it's customary to take out these pegs and for competitors to insert their own, which are more clearly discernible. Certainly much taller and often colour-coded. In our case, we're using two white pegs, a white peg at either end, uh, and the middle peg will be a different colour, uh, red uh, in our case, certainly. But we'll show you that in a moment. But that's the important thing, to find out, find your plot number and uh, insert your own pegs. And do remember that usually, not invariably, but usually, competitors will cast to the next highest number. So, for argument's sake, if this is number 13, and that peg is number 14, competitors will put their crown here, having completed their crown, and making sure that the, the, the neighbour has completed his, they're cast that way. But 
they must remember, and it's imperative they remember, to finish through the last furrow against their own crown. So in other words, they'll start, if there's a hard number on that side, they'll start from this headland and finish on that headland. It sounds complicated, but we'll reveal something about that perhaps later on. We use three marking out pegs, two white and one red. The white ones obviously go in on the headland marks and the red one in the middle. Take some time to get these pegs upright because we want them all three to line up. That's the far peg going in. It makes life easier if you can get some help or if the plowman can get some help to uh, help line these pegs up. So that when the three pegs are in line, all you should be able to see is just one peg, the nearest peg. The middle peg, I say middle, we don't place it in the middle of the plot, in fact it just comes in about 12 or 14 paces in from the far headland, and that peg is shorter, the coloured peg is shorter than the white ones, so that when they're lined up, when the first peg is removed and the two remaining pegs are lined up, all you should see, to all intents and purposes, is a red peg with a white top. Note should be made of the mark on the tractor bonnet. Uh, in the days of earlier vintage tractors, they had a, a radiator cap, of course, which uh, helped uh, to line up with the pegs. With these modern tractors, or more modern tractors now, with a bonnet uh, perhaps a couple of feet wide, it's just a, just a sheet of tin, there's no clearly defined line at the middle. So just a mark on the bonnet helped to line everything up, you see. Got the tractor lined up when the first peg comes out. Now this emphasizes the point. All you should see now from the tractor seat is just one peg, the red peg uh, with the white top. Um, you're going to single split, Clive? Yes. Trying it out with the back body? Yeah. And how do you? About inch to an inch and I a see. half. That'll, that'll be enough. Yeah. Yes. Then you'll have the share cutting the full width, that's important I suppose. Yeah. 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 So this is just, the front body is just, just skimming the ground. Yeah. Not picking up any stubble, but just skimming the ground. Yeah. I see you've lowered the coulter. You yeah, I lower the coulter because, um, because you're ploughing lighter, yeah. it gives the coulter, or coulter cuts the straw and the soil better yeah. and tends to help hold the plough. And hold the plough, so the landslide is coming, yeah. is, is doing, doing its work rather yeah. better. And yeah. I suppose it gives you a more clearly defined mark anyway to drive to. That's right, And it yeah. looks nice and tidy. Yeah. Do you, what do you do with the top link, Clive? You probably lengthen it a little bit. I'll lengthen it. Yes. A, a turn or a two turn, though, yeah. to get the back down to, to get the heel of the landslide yeah, on so I it see. cleans it out right. properly and the check chains you leave those as they are you just want to yeah. you, 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 well they're always pretty slack I as suppose. long as they're slack yes I mean if you've got one tight one it'll tend to pull yes. the tractor about I like see so. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get in line necessarily yeah that's right that's good that sounds all right but then the other thing we do is to wind I wind it up I'll have to sort of finish the setting when we're ploughing just make sure that it's just skimming the ground These final adjustments um, at this stage. And the top link is critical. To get that uh, uh, the right length is so important. It's going to be. He's going to lengthen it for this single split. He's concentrating on on the pegs now, but he's also going to watch the plow because you see he's got to get the depth right. Not too deep, but deep enough for the share to be cutting full width. He's just lengthening the top link slightly. Taking his time, there's no hurry, concentrating on getting this run straight. Deepening the plough slightly by raising the land wheel. You'll notice that the front body is idle, but just, just clear the ground, not, not unnecessarily high.
Clive's way of positioning, positioning the pegs interests me, really. I, uh, I'm far from right all the time, but my theory is that that middle peg, I say middle, in uh, inverted commas, uh, should be, in my opinion, should be much further near to the top. Clive, when he takes that middle peg out, he's going to have so far to go to the other peg without a, without a, a mark. He'll probably try and pick something up in the hedge at the top in place of a mark, but um, it's intriguing, but he gets away with it. Good plowman. Good plowman. He's happy with the plow setting now. He's looking back. He's quite happy. He's open the throttle. He's pushing on now. He'll concentrate on the, on the tractor now. He's happy with the plow. He'll keep the two pegs absolutely in line. He wants this as straight as humanly possible. This is where straightness counts. This is the only time in the course of a play match where you actually physically drive, steer the thing straight. Because from now on, of course, there's a clearly defined mark in which to put the tractor wheel, a guide to steer to. Yes, the back body is just about the right depth. We want the shear to be cutting its full width but not too deep because, of course, you s this uh, rippling has got to be buried again. It's got to be ploughed under. Note that the front body is just clearing the ground, not unnecessarily high. Winding the front furrow down now, putting the front furrow into work because he'll complete the split with the front body. The back body will be running very shallow. One of the benefits of mounted ploughing, of course, is that you can do everything from the saddle without dismounting and fiddling about around the plough winding handles. You must get this right. Take time. In a playing match, you're normally allowed four hours, perhaps five hours. It is my contention that uh, you need an hour to complete the top or the crown, comprising eight furrows. Technically eight furrows, although in point of fact uh, twelve are usually the norm. You want an hour for the start, and similarly an hour for the last eight furrows, the finish. This is where time should be taken. Once the plough is set and get into the body of work, you can usually junk on pretty well and uh, keep going. But it is so important, these two aspects of the plot, the start and the finish. Take time over this. I think you're happy with that plough, aren't you? Yeah, that's not too far out now. I'm just running that front coulter up the side of that furrow wall, so I know I'm ploughing it up out that way. Yeah, full width. Leaves nothing uncut in the middle. Yeah and just turning a little one in with the back body. Right. The reason I had to lower it on the headland was to get the front of the plough back down yeah, again to yeah. be able to do it. I see, yes. And also, I've had to shorten the top link a turn or a couple of turns to get the front to penetrate into yeah, the rain. Yeah, I understand that, makes sense. I suppose it is very critical that you'll have the full width. This coulter wants to be snug against the furrow wall there. That's right, yeah. But, but uh, at the same time, nothing on ploughed in the middle. No. That's no. yeah, totally important. And it makes sure all this yeah. uh, grain's cutting is what, what, what width is the What width is the plough on the beam? Ten inches. Oh, yes, I see. Yeah, plough in ten. That's, right, that's good. That's good. I think you're happy yeah. with that. Because you don't want too much up here, because the more you get up here, the more you've got to get away, you've that's got to right. bury underneath. But you've got to yeah. have enough, uh, as you say, to, for the share to be cutting full width. That's right, yeah. No, it's coming, no, together, that seems to com be okay. coming together very well, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. Go on down and see if it stays the same all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Clive's got the coulter nicely across here. It is important uh, not to leave anything on ploughed there. So he's, he'll probably he'll probably tend to err on the on the shallow on the narrow side. So he's just a little marginally away from the from the um, um, furrow wall. But that's uh, that's fine. He wants as much width as he can get in here. You understand. So it's lovely. That's a critical, critical, uh, critical setting. Vitally important. 
I suppose the two fires, the, the important thing is not to get too much in here. That's right, yeah. Um, you, you want uh, enough, because if you, if you have it too shallow, then the land is not going to be holding there, and your plough will tend to tend, skid around, skid around, skid around like yeah. that. Yeah. So it's nice like that. You've got something to put the wheel mark into That's the right, next time. Yeah. Looks like you've got a good width in here. Yes, in fact, in fact you've got 22 inches. Yeah, which is nice, you see. Yeah. The top come together very well, isn't it? Yeah. But as you say, it's important not to get too much in here. That's right. Just enough to support the two, the, the two opposing furrows. Yeah. I just wonder if Clive's got the back uh, body a little bit deep here. It's, uh, it's rather difficult, I think, with the mounted plough. You've got to get it in reasonably uh, well, otherwise it tends to come round, skid round on the back. Clive, what are you going to do now? Have you got a span in your hand? Right. I'm going to raise this rear disc. What I aim to get is about half an inch over the shear. Yeah. Between the disc and the top of the ah, shear. I see. As we, do, as we do with trail plowing. Yeah, and about half an inch in width. I see, to the left of the shear. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you, you can only roughly set that. The final setting is when I, you're actually plowing. I appreciate that. Yeah. So you've got the plow in. Yeah. But that's that's right. This is this is characteristic, isn't it? To have that, so you create what we call tear on here, keeping some pressure on the shear and on the, on the on the board. If yeah. You cut all the ground across it. Uh, it uh, is, is not pressing, and it, it tends to shatter. Yeah. If you get very stony ground, yes, it's better to raise the discs up a little bit higher because you'll find that it won't trap up stone. It won't trap stone. Oh, I see. Which is a common yeah. problem in this area. Exactly, on the Cotswolds, of course. And the, the plough will tend to ride on the disc, yeah. so... Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll go for this setting now, anyway, and see you how You can do it when you've got the plough in the ground in compression sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. It interests me, Clive, that you're able to make these uh, adjustments, uh, height adjustments on these discs on, the, on this lower part of the stem. I found the ransom ploughs, we've got to usually do it from here. That's, that's, that yeah, makes it somewhat that's easier. Yeah, the only disadvantage you haven't got a slot on this particular one. They're I usually see. kept in position with a, a cotter pin at the base. Oh yes, but I see. For competition ploughing, it's easier to do it on there yeah. rather yeah. than having to undo I all this. Yeah, it occurs to me it is much easier. Down with it. Uh, I like that. Which makes life a bit easier. Yeah. This this, this plough is completely standard, isn't it? Yeah. Nothing the, 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 the only extras on the here would be the, would be the, the chains, I suppose, the straw yeah. chains. That's only yeah. extras. It's nice. Nice little plough. I mean, there are some competitions, they won't allow you to use chains anyway. I think it's a nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> but I won't use chains today. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to aim to run the front tractor wheel up the middle of those two little furrows there to be in the correct position. And then the front plough will form the first part of the plough. So I've got to get that in the right position to be able to do it. Talking of chains, straw chains, I think it's a great pity that the National Society of Plowmen, in its wisdom, has sent out a directive that no chains are to be allowed in competition. I think this is sad because today, with combined um, straw, tall stubble, uh, it must be sound husbandry to pull this under. I remember as a boy plowing in green crop manure, two feet high and more. You're happy with that, that's pretty tidy, isn't it? Yes, yeah, didn't go so well when I went in, but now I've got up into the top a bit more, it says it's coming yeah, out okay. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, the, some of the soil has rolled over, but when I plough back down the other way, the wheel will trim it all up. Oh, I can see that. Put a straight edge on it. That's so interesting, that makes sense. I should think the plough's left enough room to get the opposing furrow to slot in there very well. As he says, when he comes back, when he retraces uh, his steps, the tractor wheel will trim that up, will crush that soil that's rolled over too far, allowing the opposing fur to slot in there nicely. It is important to get these to knit closely together, not too high and no gap between them.
I'm always fascinated by the way the soil accelerates off the board. The, the sharper the or more acute the twist on the board, the greater the acceleration. So much so that uh, with digger ploughing, under ideal conditions, uh, an instant seed bed is often ploughed. For the same token, of course, long cylindrical mould boards with a gentle twist will lay up on broken furrows, or practically on broken furrows that will withstand downpours of rain. A study in concentration and minute adjustment. This is what competition ploughing is about. It certainly isn't a race. Complete concentration. The exclusion of all else. You really don't know what's going on around you. Just concentrating on the job in hand. Trying for perfection. The object is to plough the perfect furrow. There's no such thing, of course, but that, that's the object. To get it as near perfect as possible. Got to have a certain attitude of mind, I think, to plough well. Going back to what I was saying about on the previous run up, this front fur rolling over, I was referring to this rolling down into the pier. But on the next run down the field, the rear wheel of the tractor will flatten all that out and just leave a nice edge at the side of this furrow so you can match the other front one up to it. So don't be too worried about some of this coming over into here. I mean, ideally it's better if it doesn't, but you can put it right if it does. Conditions are far from ideal, but this is the name of the game really, to do the very best you can under the prevailing conditions. This is fair Cotswold ground, not too many stones, not a great depth of soil, but surprisingly stiff in places, or Cotswold men call it stiff. Yes, this front fur is rolling in to meet the other one pretty well, I think. I think the overall picture will, will look quite presentable from the headland. At least it's reasonably level. This will be reasonably shallow. If Clive proposed to plough the plot at five and a half or six inches perhaps, he'll be in it a maximum four and a half or very maximum five anyway at this stage. You're happy with that? You've got 12 rows in there, Clive? Pretty yeah, good job, I think. it didn't come in too bad at all. No, it's I, nice and level. And yeah. It looks nice. I got rid of most of the straw anyway. Yeah, you have. It's quite a lot of straw to bury. Yeah. Of course, you, you probably haven't got your skims down yet to a full depth, have you? Well, I'm not actually into full depth. No. I go a little bit deeper when I come back down yeah. there again. Yes, I can see that. It could probably send a little bit more flesh. Yeah. Now, you're going to cast, you're going to assume that that, that on your right-hand side is your neighbour, so you're going to cast that way. Yeah. When are you going to measure off? Well, really, I should have measured on my last time down there. Oh, I see. But I'll measure it yeah. when I come down there exactly again. Right. Uh, before you go, or the first time up your neighbour's plot, yeah. if it is wrong, you can then try and correct it then rather than trying to do it when you're halfway across the plot. That's good, good, that, that so sound. I think I think we should emphasise that to budding ploughmen, that it is imperative that they, you put any discrepancy, or they put any discrepancy against their neighbour. That's right. Rather than against their own plot. Yeah. And as you rightly say, it is critical to measure this frequently, but certainly before you cast off to measure it straight away to see how it is. Yeah, that's right. There's my six furrows marked on yes. Yes, the mark out stick. Yes. You've got two, four, six furrows there. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. But I'm going to use that to measure across there. Right. So I put the six, the mark for six furrows there. Yes. Then you count one, two, three. Five 
tells me that that is the right width for me to finish off. If you've okay. got the other end, you you that's perfect. Yeah. Yes. When I measure the other end, if I find that I'm less than the two furrows that I need to get to there, I know that I'm narrow on that end. Yes. Or if I've gone over that two furrow mark, you're wide on that I'm end. I'm wide on that end. I see. Yes. And, and by how much too, of course, because and that's, by how much, that's right. You that's know straight away with yes. marks on the stick yes. what you're actually ploughing. Interesting. Interesting. So we'll go down to the bottom yes. and see what that measures yes. there, and I can explain better on the stick. Yes. And as you rightly say, you would have normally done this uh, on your final run this way, on the, uh, w w when you're completing your top, on the That's final right, run that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Before you, Before you cast off. That's so. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's customary to cast the next highest number. Normally, yeah. Normally. Uh, it's not imperative, but normally good societies will make sure that you have a higher number on the right-hand side. That's right. So that yeah. with the result you start from a given headland and finish on that same headland. Yeah. Which is nice. So we'll play down to there and I'll measure it across the bottom yep. and we'll see how that works out on my Lovely, skin. lovely cloud. Yeah. That tells me that that is the force of the furrow narrower on this end than what it is that end. So, so you've got it to it's a quarter of a furrow out, a quarter of a furrow narrower this narrower side, on this that's side. right, yes. and you're, to get that out you'll, you'll, uh, you'll wind the plough, you'll adjust the plough across shaft, of course, or, or sorry, the width just of the plough. On the, on the, the furrow width. On the furrow yeah. width, on the front furrow width, that's right. Yeah. You do it in one go, or no, two goes? Two or three oaks, man. I think that's good, Not really. too much at one time. That's right, simply because, I suppose, if it's really nice conditions, if you t take it out um, in one go, you'd lose the uniformity, it wouldn't, right, it wouldn't yeah. match up. That's right. Now tell me, what would you do if you got, if your neighbour had, had got a bow in that? If, if he got, a, if he got, if he got a bow. In other words, if he was, if he's wide this side, this end, and wide the other end, and narrow in the middle, how would you get about that? Well, the only thing you can do first of all is you've got to try and get it parallel. So you would have to um, correct the fault in the middle to get it sort of somewhere handy, and then yes. um, put it right on. Over the whole length, yes, over the whole thing. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah. if if the boat if the bend goes the other way, yes, you would have to wind it off. Yeah, um, and do it that way. Yes, so you take the, the sort of furrows off. But you wouldn't even then. You wouldn't find necessary to measure across in the middle the the, the, the width, would it? You you you'll get it as long as you were right at each end. Yeah. As soon as you got it straight, then it would automatically be parallel. It would automatically be parallel right. right up through. Yes. I'd never really find a necessity to measure in the middle. No. Unless it is really bad. Yeah. Well, that makes and sense. you've got some idea where it's wrong. I understand that. Well, I do a bit of playing myself, and, and I don't know how you feel about this, but I think I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather have um, uh, a series of small uh, crooked aspects and one big half moon thing. I don't know how yeah. you but I find it much easier to do that. So would I. Yeah, much easier. <laughs> that's right. In other words, there's overall straight, what we call shaky straight or crooked straight, yeah. if you like. That makes sense. Yeah, so it is easier to that's straighten right. that out. Yeah. But I mean, you, you, you're quite happy. A plan was quite happy with just a quarter of a furrow out. I mean, that is very acceptable, isn't it? I mean, if you're, say, a furrow or more than a furrow out of being parallel, yes. you would have to take the ball by the horns and just go over with the tractor to try and yes. take it off quick. Yes, in your case with a mounted plough, yeah. that, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't apply with a trail plough, but since we're talking about mounted ploughs, that's how you would do it. Yeah. Yes. So but of course, if you go over with a tractor, then you're going to start, you're start, you're going to start crushing the pre previous furrow slice. Yeah. But the thing is, if you don't take, if you're that far out, if you don't take it off early enough, yes. you're going to be trying to take that off all the way through yes, the plot right. of the yes. ploughing, which is not going to look very good. You're saying you've got to be decisive and do this as early as possible? Yeah. And put any discrepancy on this side rather than on your own side? That's right. Good. Yeah. No, I understand that. Well done, Clive. But, uh, well done. That fortunately isn't too far no, out. No, that's, <laughs> you, you, you'll do something well, I'm sure. I'm, I'm convinced of that. I'm still not convinced that Clive's measuring method is right, it's certainly right for him, but I, it wouldn't do for me I think, I much prefer a tape. Uh, it seems to me, that it occurs to me that Clive can lose an inch or two by uh, measuring end over end on that uh, pole. 
he gets away with it. Of course, he's got he's doing it in multiples of ten inches, but I would rather measure off and, and divide the measurement by ten inches, or, or bring it down uh, into ten inch uh, uh, widths. Clive's pushing on now, going at normal speed, I suppose, or the speed that uh, suits the conditions. It is possible to go too slow. If you go too slow, the soil falls off the board rather than be replaced by the board. At the same time, of course, if you go too quickly, then you throw the soil. There's an optimum speed, and you'll find that in competition, a good plowman, having found that speed, when he gets off to make an adjustment, or for whatever reason, he will leave the throttle, whatever the setting is on the tractor, so what he does after he starts is at the same speed as he did before he stopped. I, I'm intrigued, of course, I'd expect you to have your ins and outs nice with a little close coupled mounted plough, rather tidier than a trail plough, but um, I, see, I notice that most people competent playing have this gimmicky thing, this quick release top link. You're going on with purely the old Cottonwood Guard uh, mechanical thing, or, or just a screw top link. You find that all right? Yeah, I manage with that okay. I know a quick entry top link is a lot better, but all I'm doing with that one when I get on to the end is just, as the normal setting for plowing now, is just give it a turn, just you, one turn shorter than I see. to get it in. Put the it down to its points. Yeah. Yeah. Then when you get in, just put it back to yeah. you know, the no, 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 normal got. length. Yeah. Can you do it on the move? Or you have to dip the clutch, you have to stop to do that. Sometimes you have to dip yeah. the clutch, yeah. sometimes yeah. you can do it on the move. Yeah. And Would then the basic setting for the top link, you just want it short enough to keep the plough penetrating into the yes. ground. That's right, I realise that. Of course, if you get the top link too short, the back of the plough comes up. Yes. And of course you don't... Yeah, you're, 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 you're not packing it then, you're not packing it. No. Course, exactly right. And likewise, if you get the top link too long, yes. The front of the plough won't go in the ground anyway. It doesn't matter how many times you wind the level it box down, it won't go in. So you've just got to have it set. The top it will link go is in. one of the most critical settings on the plough, really, isn't it? It is, yeah. The most critical. I mean, half a half a half a half a turn exactly makes, makes a difference. Quite a difference. Makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. I'm sure of that. Yeah. And you'll agree with me. I'm sure that tally ins and outs are so important. It is. You get it. Well, well, they're, they're points for nothing. They're unearned, really. Aren't they? You don't have to That's be very right. skillful to do it, do you? No. And they're worth up to 20 points, uh, you know, in total, 10 points ahead of you. That's right. So it pays to get those right. You, yeah. know, you get some points on the cheap, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. But yeah. Clive is going well, isn't it? It's going yes. well. It's not doing too bad. It's and, and, all, is yeah. it power? Is it is, is, is the well, I'm going to go around another couple of times and measure it again. It's been coming in this end slightly narrow. Yeah. Now in the right with the top end yeah. because this end is narrow. Yeah. But, uh, well, you've, got, you've, again you've, you've got a fair bit of stubble here. I see you haven't got your chains down, but you've got your skims working. Um, well, you, you think they're about right? Just just taking the corner off with the skim rather rather than. Yeah. You've well, gone deeper than that, would I suppose? Not really. As long as you take the corner off yes. to to bury it, really. Yeah. If you try and skim too much, you've got too much going in there, and then it won't. Yes roll it over and seal it up anyway. Right. Yeah. So if you take off too much too, then it'll lay in flat. It's not being supported. It's not being supported on the previous slice. Yeah. So it's not in depth for those. Yeah. You can see now the uh, acceleration of the soil I was talking about earlier. And also this uh, shows the length of the straw. And I'm sure that under these conditions, chains would benefit. They just tucked that straw in very nicely. But you can see, really, uh, on a day like today, the pleasure of vintage ploughing. Being on a tractor low down, near to the plough, so that you can see exactly what's happening. Actually hear things happening. And uh, you don't have to have a, a, be able to climb the west face of the Eiger to get up into a cab in an all enveloping cab with so many blind spots. Very pleasurable thing. It can go against you, of course, when it's a wet and drizzly day, but nevertheless, look on the bright side. Glorious day today, things are going well.
not the prettiest work in the world, but Clive's doing a super job under the conditions. Conditions are far from ideal. It's tough and dry. Uh, but there it is, you see. It's the same. Uh, in competition, always remember it would be the same for everybody. Plots are usually pretty uniform, and I know the luck of the draw will come into the equation from time to time, but as I said before, make the best of the conditions for me. So we've just measured, how is it? Is it parallel? No, I've, in actual fact I've lost a little bit more on this end than I wanted to. It's slightly narrower on this end oh, than the other end. Now you've got to make a decision. So I've got to make a decision now as to what I'm going to do with it. Well, I don't mind it coming in narrow, but I don't want it to come in wide, otherwise I've got to lose a furrow somewhere. Right. So and, with a, and with a little mounted plough like that you can't plough the ground for it, can you? No. You can't, not with it, as we can with a till plough, move the whole thing across and plough a single furrow. No. It doesn't work with this, no. does it? So I'm, I'm going to purpose, because I know the plough is ploughing narrower than the stick suggests, yes. it's not quite going tan, yes. so I'll lose a bit of ground that way, right. plus I'll plough purposely slightly narrower on the front body yes. to lose a bit more ground and hopefully it should come in okay yeah. there. Well, you tweaked it early enough, haven't you? This is the thing. Well, if you leave these things too late, then, it, then you can get egg on your face, really, can't you? Too late. Exactly. <laughs> well, that is myself. I've been all through that. Yeah. That's all right. That's lovely. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I'll go another couple of times round and yes. then check it again. Yes. And yes. see where we are with it there. So, so what do you want? To, what forgive my ignorance? What do you what do you want to leave that idea? So as you drop in, you're at four, you're at forty inch. You're you're fifty two inch centre. So you're forty yeah. inches between the tires, aren't you? So I need forty inches. You you need all that. Well, I mean, you well, would, thirty eight wouldn't be If I was ploughing ten, I would need forty inches for yeah. four furrows. But because I'm not ploughing ten, I'm ploughing slightly under. Yes. It doesn't matter if that measurement is less. No. As long as I get the tractor over it. Well, obviously it can't be more because you won't straddle it. No. Then, that's then you're, that's then the figure I'm aiming for is yeah. to straddle the yeah. four furrows. I see the four four furrows. So yeah. 38, 39 stuck, 40 inches, you, and you're quite happy with all that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Certainly not more than 40. No. You've got a big problem. <laughs> right. yeah. we, we've all been there. <laughs> Well done, Clive. Well done. I'll go around another couple of times and yeah. then we'll check it yeah, so again. Check, check it out again, that's yeah. right. I see you're relaxing a bit. <laughs> I might not be in the middle. It's <laughs> coming well. <laughs> so I was just adjusting the, the top link. Must be a bit of a chore to do it every uh, time you drop in, but at the same time, it's uh, it's perseverance and striving for a good plot of work. Often, ploughing from the headland looks as though it's not very deep, but here's an indication of how deep it is. It's, the angle of the tractor suggests he's ploughing probably six inches deep, though you wouldn't think so by looking at the work. Clive, you just stopped to make an adjustment. Um, you're happy with that so far? Yeah, well it came in more than a bit narrow, but I'm happy that I can do something yeah. with it now. But because this is the last time down the field against my start, yes. I'm going to come up on the depth of the plough a couple of turns, so it's a little bit lighter. Yes. Uh, not largely for, because, for largely, the finish. Yes, because yeah. it's a, you're, you're not going to be too deep for the finish. You no. Know, you've got to get in and get your crumb from No. Course. And this, this is the last time I'll be going down that side anyway. So. And you'll plough back up, and you'll have, so you'll, you'll be straddling from back up, won't you? Yeah. So where are you going to, where, what are you going to do then? You're going to steer with the left wheel, presumably? Well, my left wheel then will run up the side of this curve. Oh, so on, the, on your crane or something? Yeah. I think it's a good thing to remember about the wheel, too, because we're talking to young men. If they can remember that as soon as you can straddle, steer with your left wheel on the crane side. That's right, yeah. If you get that instilled into your mind, yeah. then you finish laying the last wheel the right way. The right way. Yeah. Laying against your own wheel. Yeah, otherwise you could easily finish up going the wrong way. Exactly, and lose 30 or 40 points in, in the contest. Right? Yeah. Right. 
So yeah. how much are you going to come up here, do you think, now? You've been, you've been playing at five and a half. I've been five and a half, I've come up to about four now. I see, that's interesting. Yeah, or five yeah. and a half to five. Something like that. Yeah. Exactly right. And the same this side, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, I'll explain when I'm down the other end. I see. How light I'm going to be. It's something I want to point out because I'm coming light anyway. I see, yes. I see. I see. I see. I'll go down this side yes. and I'll drop in the other end yes. and then show what I'm doing. That's interesting. Because from the judge's point of view, of course, the finish comprises the last eight thirds, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Considering the crown comprises eight thirds. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you, you would leave ideally a full row width. Of it. That green fro should be full width. Almost. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, you, you, oh. yeah. Yeah, because if it's too narrow, you tend to get too far into this row. I see. Yes. You know what? When you come back down to I mean, as, you, as you know, you're well, you're a high cut man yourself, and you know with high cut, we like to leave a narrow glass green fur there. <coughs> yeah. And then to steer, rather than with the guide rope, with the coulter against the fur wall. That's right. And then yeah. that gives that step on this side. Yeah. And I get away with that without a left hand disc. We're yeah. going off at a tangent. We're talking about yeah. a high cut job now, rather than rather than uh, the magic yeah. cut. Anyway, as long as you're happy with that. So now, you're, what are you going to do now? Well, you're, go you're going to complete that one, obviously. Yeah. Uh, go up to the top and then they're going to come back down here and go you're going to run the empty. same way again. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And you're going to take that out in, you're going to take that out now uh, with, with the front and the back one's going to be, you won't take all that with the front one. What, this? Yes. I'll, I'll be just ploughing with the back one on this one. Oh really? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be just ploughing one furrow up there. It's a little bit wide just there. Yes. Up there would be okay. I see. So I'd just take one 10 inch slope out. Yes, yes. It'd be 10 inches to come back the oh, other way. That's right, laying it that way against your trend. Yeah. Of course, this is your top. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. So, as long as you can get the tractor over the width of those tyres, yes. it doesn't matter really if it becomes a little bit narrow up in the middle there because when you, when you actually finish off, yes. Your wheel mark is coming down here anyway, yes. which will cover it over. Yes, and it won't move right. the mark. You won't and you and it. you don't uh, you don't with a stall plough a heavier uh, that where the wheel mark can be. You don't plough that for heavier but with, with the idea of carrying it weight to the tractor. If you can put it in there, you could do. Yes, yes. just to keep the wheel up. You just keep the wheel up a little bit. Yeah, there's nothing worse than the big indentation there, is it? it looks no. like two rings, doesn't it? That's you get, right. You get, you get it two rings. Yeah. Right, uh, you know, often we sort of like to plough a bit strong so it will carry the wheel. Yeah. Never mind. It's going well. So I'll go up to the top and then I'll come back down and Lovely. come up there again. Which watch with great interest. Clive's coming around here now, he's coming in again with the left hand wheel in on the crown side, that's important, he's going to plough one furrow out of here now with the back body, he'll, run, he'll turn at the top then and plough the sole furrow out coming this way, so that will lean against the, um, his crown, his top, that's important. It is important that the plough finishes against his own work, don't ever forget that, it is terribly important. If you finish the wrong way you're going to lose 30 points straight away. If you leave two wheel marks, you'll leave similarly 30 or whatever points. So you must keep this, uh, keep thinking about this now. Right, Clive. It looks to me, I'm not a magic plowman, but the depth is about right. You're going to find enough ground there for the crumb throw. Yeah, yeah. That should be okay, but. What I've had to do with the plough to get it to come over is to shorten the left hand lift rod yes. and let the right hand one go down. So that, that would theoretically yeah, make the front that make the right hand furrow plough much deeper. Yeah, but in actual fact it lets the, it swings the plough over. It puts like the that. pressure on that board yeah. and brings the plough to the left. Yeah. I can see that. And if you look at the tractor, because the left hand, the right hand wheel is now up yes. and the left hand one's down in the furrow. Yes that completely alters the seconds of the lift arm, so yes. you've got to counteract that. I see. To, uh, to get it to... And, 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 and we talked earlier about the top link being critical, what have you done with that? Well, if, because this left hand wheel was dropped down in the furrow, yes. you have to lengthen the top link. I see. Because the plough, the tractors come over like that, and it bring, tries to bring the top link with it. I see. So you've got to push the top link back out to, yeah. to counteract it. This is the trickiest bit of the plot, isn't it? Yeah. Without yeah. question. Yeah. It's getting the plough to run exactly in the right, right. place. Yes, yes. I mean, you can push the cross shaft through right to the end of the um, of its travel. Of its travel, but I've been able to get that one to yeah. come over without having to do it. But lots of times you have to push the cross shaft through. I know that we're ploughing, and for this video, it's the ideal implement for the job. In fact, insofar as it's absolutely basic, 
there's no sophistication on it at all. No. But it would be right, I suppose, if a young chap could save up his pennies and, and it, put an extended cross shot in there. That well, no. would help, wouldn't it? Not, not really with this plough. You really need a narrow cross shaft with this plough. But you've got four inches on that cross shaft that I could have pushed it I through. If and I that would be enough. It. And that, that would be, be enough. enough. I see. Yeah. But quite obviously, you've got to do that on the headland before you before you drop oh, the plough. Yeah. And that's got to be done. You've got, yeah. to, you've got to decide to do that earlier enough. Yeah. Exactly. But you must do those two things. Uh, one with the top link, you've got to lengthen it. Yes. And then the right hand drop link. Drop link's got to be lengthened, and the left hand one's got to be shortened. But all these things got to be done simultaneously. Yeah. You need to do it on the headland right. before you come yes. in. Yes. That's lovely. And uh, what, what have you got? You've got rather less than a furrow left there now. Just a bit under, yeah. Which is nice, isn't it? Yeah, Which just, just about what you want. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. So I suppose you're going to, that's going to come over in there now. It's going to be marginally less uh, strength than that one. Not 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 so much volume. Not not so big as that one. It wants to, they want to diminish in size, I suppose. Don't yeah, they? yeah. So that one will come over there a little bit smaller than that. Then the crumb throw will come over and, and perhaps about halfway up the. Up about the halfway up. Yeah. It's nice like that. Yeah. So you've got a general decrease in, in size. That's right. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. We're shaping up well, isn't it? We'll see what it's like when we come back down. But you're a typical plowman. <laughs> you're a typical plowman. No, you're never completely happy with it. No. <laughs> right, this left hand lift arm, I've screwed it up so it makes this one shorter. And this one has been made longer. The reason being that this wheel is dropped in the furrow, which tends to take this lot down with it, so you need to pull it back up again. And I've slightly lengthened the top link. And the reason for altering the furrow width if I wind it back to narrow, you can see what's happening to the frame of the plough. It becomes out of line. The more you wind it narrower. So because you've got the plough brought over, I need to do that, square it up. Notice that, uh, as I said, drive is staying with the left hand wheel against the furrow wall now, and there is a, a wheel mark showing, of course, on the applied work. Now, when he gets to the top, he'll turn around and come back, staying with the right hand wheel against the furrow wall. And that'll put the uh, wheel mark on top of the previous wheel mark, so there's only one showing. Although there are two wheel marks, there's only one showing. This is it, so important. He's shallow now not too deep, because he's going to need to get into the bottom of the right hand uh, sole to bring up the crumb furrow, the last furrow which will go on the, uh, will, will be thrown towards the plant. His turn now, he's, uh, he's got to reset the plough of course now. He's got to uh, uh, shorten the right hand drop link, lengthen the left hand one, to put the plough where it was before for general ploughing, simply because the right hand wheel's in the bottom there and the left one's on the top. There's a good shot of ins and outs, nice and tidy. Keep things nice and tidy, because as I said before, they're honouring points, really. Uh, you've just got to keep this tidy, and you can earn up to ten points per headland from the judge for this. At the same time, you've got to trip in early enough so that the plough will be at full working depth after it, uh, or when it crosses the headland scratch mark. Drive all over brother shouting. Yeah. All over brother shouting. <laughs> the results. That's right. <laughs> Well, it's not the straightest finish in the world, no. but do remember, I mean, well, you're fully aware, you've ploughed the plot, the conditions aren't ideal, it's pretty stiff no, old ground, it's and it's been trampled. Yeah. It's been trampled. Got a wheel mark. Exactly, it, exactly right. But I like, I like the crumb throw. Might be a little bit strong here, but back up there, and you all agree with me that the crumb throw wants to be about half the strength of the, of the other throw. Yeah. And a nice clean step. Well, you have the quarter right down to the bottom of the share. Almost that. down to the bottom, yes. yeah. You've got to be careful you don't go down too low because the hub of the disc will yeah, exactly. rub on. I see, you will rub on there. So and the other you way. find that you have that cot a little bit wider, the back cot there? No, I left it set. A normal, normal setting for setting. weight. I yeah. see, I see. Yeah. Um, and of course, you see, I mean, that plough, your plough is absolutely basic, but uh, 
you can put all sorts of bits on it. I mean, the, the, someone might think it worthwhile to put an extending axle on for the for the land wheel. That's so right, the land yeah, wheel comes out and follows the tractor wheel. Model. Yeah. These these two what do we call these chauffeurs? I think. Yeah. On this I mean, side. it would improve the appearance of it. Yes, it would. Random. And I suppose too, it make it it make it more efficient insofar as you're running on a level bottom and you plough run level. That's right. And yeah. it is there it's tending to do that. Yeah. So it, yes, I can hear it. But at the same time, we made this video today with a basic plough, and that's ploughed in from start to finish with no with no faking at all. No, no extras on the plough at all. And the weather's been kind. And it's been beautiful. And you can put <laughs> that slight kink down for the pint of beer you had at lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. What I'm like. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sunday. <laughs>